that, but I also want to, um, I, I'm really curious to know what was that conversation like when you, you said that how he came and he embraced you um, yes. after nine months, he came and yes. embraced you yes. and apologized. So I would love to hear like, you know, what that conversation was like and how you've been able to transform even his life with that very instant, there was a transformation that happened. Yeah, it was a transformation because I I'm just coming back to active duty as a chaplain, and you know, like he said, I'm I'm the I'm the first to do it, so it's no it's no trail for me. So mm -hmm. all I knew was I had a Christian mother who taught me how to love. I mm -hmm. had a mother who taught me how to be uh, uplift people. I, I had a mother who taught me that no matter what the person's skin tone, sexuality, or who they are. Give them the love of God. So I walk into this man's office. I'm, si I'm sincerely excited. And I reach out to my hand to him. And he says, uh, he wouldn't shake my hand. And he says, um, we got some problems with your religion and how you guys treat women. Have a nice day. And he wow. wouldn't speak to me for nine months. You know, but one thing about a man or a woman on a mission, I didn't care. I went out and loved the troops. I was out there playing basketball with them, counseling them, lifting weights with them, crying with them, loving on them. And I got to tell you, after nine months, you have a battalion of about a thousand people. And this guy comes out and he said, I have wronged one of my officers. Mm. He's a phenomenal man. And he hugged me in tears. Mm. Wow. In tears. Yes. And said, yes. listen. I love you. And from that moment, this Catholic, yes. he had a Muslim praying at his Sunday dinner mm. every Sunday. You understand? So that's the power, not only of love, but confidence yes. in love, right? Yes, yes. It's, it's not kissing backside. You doing God's work and God's work is yes. forever and enduring. And therefore, you're teaching those people who don't know what real love is to love. I had mm -hmm. another incident, sister. You know, people think as you go up in rank that this stuff doesn't happen. It actually has. It happens more. So probably about three or four years ago, one of my high-ranking commanding officers, he would shake everybody's hand in the room mm -hmm. but mine. And he would look at my face and smirk, right? Mm -hmm. And I would smirk right back. And he wouldn't say anything to me. I said, I love you, sir. <laughs> and walk out of the room. And yeah. so after five months, one of our officers committed suicide. Guess mm -hmm. who had to do the funeral service? Wow. Me, right? Because I was the chaplain there. I did the, the funeral service. And of course, with my background, I was able to use the Bible Right. in the service and he came to me in front of everybody same story mm -hmm. hugged me cried in front of everybody and said i'm glad you're on our team and all mm -hmm. i gotta do every time is say praise god because at the end of the day if you yeah. have confidence in love yes you'll teach people how to love not by your mouth that's easy yes but through sometimes being mistreated maligned and even lied upon mm -hmm. that you'll teach people how to love Mm, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that goes to um, one of the things that you said that how for the three A's to a successful relationship, you said it's affirmation, acknowledgement and appreciation. And I was going to ask the question, does that just um, relate to your wife, Rhonda? But I'm guessing that how this relates to every relationship in your life, yes. because you'll get the same benefits. No, without question. I, I think as human beings, we have been taught to not be intimate with people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so for me, especially with men, right? Because we're closed off. They told us not to cry, told us to be tough. I would go in and say, man, you know, I just really appre appreciate how smart you are. Mm -hmm. I just really appreciate how you did that project. I am never critical of people, right? Because I understand, I wrote a book on self-esteem. Mm -hmm. I, I understand the principle of being critical to people. What I do is I appreciate them, I acknowledge them, and I accentuate that love into them because they need that. And so I yeah. use that in every relationship, even in my relationships with my sisters. I accentuate them, I acknowledge them, and I appreciate them. You know why? 
because they need a strong man in their life who is, you know, <laughs> I have so many me memories. This got me in trouble, by the way. <laughs> so we, we're at this ceremony, and this sister, she's getting ready to uh, PCS, United Military, so it's a permanent change of station. And so she is, she is up there, and she's giving her speech, and she says, I have never had a man in my life who just cared for me and was not trying to sleep with me. Mm. You are my everything. Now, I was, mm. I was saying, I was like, oh, my God, yeah, that's great. My wife was like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. All right. That's a bit much, brother. <laughs> so sometimes that gets me in a little trouble. <laughs> right, right. Oh. Yes, yes. So you, you, I'm, I'm going back. So in the movie Avatar, right? There was that whole thing with the characters there. I see you. It just while you were saying this, I was just thinking back to that that I see you thing that they talked about there. The I see you. You know when the uh, when the other chaplain had spoken to you about I see you. Just how important that is for mm -hmm. our sisters and our brothers, though. And, and man, I can go on all day about that part. But it is very important that we as men also provide that same caring, that same uh, that same empathy to our young men. Yes. It's very important that we do that. And you're right. And we don't. And you are an excellent vessel to do that with because of your size. I mean, there's a reason why God made you what you are. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and at this point in your life, you this is just me. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm, yeah, whatever. I believe that you are doing God's work and you are doing it yeah. through the body, through everything and through the experience that he gave you because he knew that you'd be able to deal with this. And that you'd yes. be able to translate it to something on the, on the distant end and, and yes. everybody that you've touched along the way. I, I just think back to that to that um, Protestant chaplain that talked to you, right? How much does he know about your life now? The, 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 chapel, the chaplain that addressed you for that hour? Well, he, I, I don't think he knows much about my life. I've been trying to find him. I think he, he retired as a Lieutenant Colonel. I think he was disgruntled or whatever. You know, but I, I learned a lot from that. You know, he probably is disgruntled about his not receiving promotion to Colonel, but he doesn't know the thousands of lives that I changed because of him, right? Yes. He's just looking at his own personal yes. situation. So for me, I've been trying to find him to try to let him know the good news, but I haven't been able to find him. So I don't, I don't know where he is. Right. So that that's, that's the big part of the story, right? So we don't know for everybody out there that's listening to this thing right now, you don't know who you're going to affect or by the actions that you take. You don't know what positive actions those are going to have down the road. It, it may be with that person that you spoke to that day that person who may have been, as the chaplain was, who was contemplating suicide or doing harm to themselves or others. You don't know that. That kind word that you give them, that uplifting word that you give them can change many lives down the road. So th that's where we just suggest that you do that, that you do right. that, that kind word. It, it costs nothing. It costs Absolutely. nothing. Absolutely. You got you to gotta remove yourself out of the process, right? So, it, you know, one of the things that I do, if you guys look at all my videos, all the videos I've got on this shirt that say Colonel or Dr. Shabazz and people externally say, oh, my God, he's so arrogant. He's so conceited. He's so self-focused. No, I'm, I'm strategic, mm -hmm. right? Because you don't get to make Colonel in the United States Air Force or Army as an African-American man very often, right? Mm -hmm. So I want the young brothers and the sisters to see, right, that I'm a Colonel, mm -hmm. right? And once they get beyond their first perception and see me walking around the gym, slapping fives with everybody, then after a while, they're going to get some courage. And yeah. now I can pour into their life. You understand? Yeah. You, not, you not only have to be get to where you're going to go. You got to be strategic on how you're dealing with those people you want to uplift. Yeah. You understand? So for me, that is a part of who I am, right? Because I know they're scared when they see, you know, the colonel. Right. But once they find out who I am and they know where I came from and what I've been through, now I can touch their lives. I have put 82 people through officer school. Wow. Mm. Wow. wow. So that, that's and all of those people. Oh, right. Yeah. They may not understand that here. Chapman. You're going to tell them how that works because that, that's a big deal. I was an officer in the airport. I went through a whole different process. But this is yeah. a very big deal. This is taking folks that came in to the Army enlisted. Yes. And you've, you've given them the means to go in and become an officer, which changed the trajectory of their lives as well and the lives of those people that they care about. Absolutely. You change, you change your generations, right? Because to become an officer, 
and, and at least in Army, it's probably the same in, in the Air Force, but you need what's called a 110 GT score, right? And so a lot of us come in and we don't have the 110. Like I came in, it, you know, it took me, I was I took seven years enlisted. So I passed the test on the fifth time, right? Mm -hmm. I had to go to what is called B-step. It's a math class where you got to get your score. So mm -hmm. I passed the test on the fifth time before I got the 110. So when I'm sitting soldiers down, I can tell them, hey, listen, I know you don't think you're smart enough. I know you don't think you're good enough. I know you doubt. I know you think the people on the other side of this wall are better than you. But let me tell you my story. Yeah. Let me tell you it took me five times. Let me tell you I was in special education, right? And so now they begin to build up in confidence. So those young African-Americans, well, it was two Caucasian-Americans, but those young African-Americans, the majority, all are now captains and majors and some are lieutenant colonels and then yeah. totally change the trajectory of their lives. Yes, mm. and all the people they care about. So I want people to hear that. He didn't say he passed it the first, second, third, or fourth. He passed it the fifth time. Don't stop. Don't quit. You were at the precipice of your success. You were at that precipice. Don't stop before you reach it. Amazing story. Amazing story. And let me, and let, me let me interject here. Don't stop. Don't quit. So in that, in that excrement that I was going through, Yes. You got your boys, you got mm -hmm. your girls who tell telling me, hey, you should just quit. Yes. It ain't for you. Yes. That ain't what God designed for you. Maybe you should just stay where you're at. You're asking for too much, right? Yes. There's a yes. saying, brothers and sisters, you will never be an eagle hanging around chickens. So what mm -hmm. I did was I separated myself from them chickens and I went into the high school and got a uh, a ninth grader to tutor me in math. And I mm -hmm. passed that test on the fifth time. And all those chickens, even today, tell me how courageous I am because now I'm an eagle. Mm -hmm. so, hey, that eagle. So, wow. Your first name, Khaled. Khaled. Yes. Uh, Khaled. What's the definition of Khaled? Khaled means immortal. Mm -hmm. ones, ones whose ideas live forever. Now you see the link there to those 82 people that I got to officer school and all the other people that I mentor. My idea of self-preservation, helping people, put, paying it forward, I chose that name because that name is going to live in those people and my children forever. That idea, not the name, mm. that idea. Yes. So, Boz, yes. I want you to hear this one, though. I, I want to <laughs> hear it. Speak. It means an eagle that flies yes. above all eagles. Mm. It flies alone. Yes. Mm. Yes. Wow. I chose yes. that name. Yeah. Wow. Now, that's a big deal. Once again, because we're talking about these these forums. So we've been discussing some of these. The child has been talking about, you know, uh, mindset. mindset, the mindset, methodology. Right? We've been talking about that methodology right now, mm -hmm. getting putting those things into action. The mastery of that. Right. He went, school. he went to school. He's still in school. He's getting mastery in various areas, which is taking him to money or is taking him to his vision of success. And so yes. that, that's that's the thing that has to happen here. He talked about the, uh, you know, being eagle. You can't be an eagle hanging around chickens. Big deal. You're going to have a lot of people telling you that idea, that business idea that you have. It's not gonna, that it doesn't work. But guess what? Guess what? Sherman uh, just told us here. The average millionaire has failed seven times and most experienced bankruptcy twice before achieving their version of success. And so yes. we're couching this in the area of religion because that's the faith that we all live in. We have a religious yes. background. We have faith. But this is the same thing in your life, whether you're religious or not. Yes, these, that's these, right. principles, these principles are all the same principles that will lead you to your success, right. your, vision, right. your vision and version of success. Absolutely. And when you think about it, you know, there's a saying, if you're the smartest person in your group, you need to let them go and get a new group. That's right. Stick around people that will influence you, people that will uplift you and want to see you successful. Those are the ones, those are the eagles in their own right that you want to be associated with. Because, you know, anything less will pull you down because misery loves company. Yes. It really does. Absolutely. So you talk about mindset. Yes. Take this one down. Until you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at will never change. Absolutely. Right. You can have the same group. You can have the same environment. You can have the same everything. But you need to look at them with a fresh set of eyes. Right. 
And when you see that those eyes don't line up with your eyes, then you have to move out. And so when I thought about eyes and looking at things different, I developed a personal philosophy. And here it is. It's called the four eyes. Interdict mediocrity, mm -hmm. intercept ignorance, infuse excellence. And this is the most important one. Influenced by many, defined by none. I think most of us get into this thing where, oh, I like him and I like her. I'm going to be him. No, sir. Mm -hmm. No, ma'am. Influenced by many defined by none take whatever you need from people's lives but you got to be yourself and i think that's that's exactly why we fail sometimes we're trying to be carbon copies of other people you have to be yourself but you got to develop a personal philosophy and a mindset like you guys are talking about definitely and so you, you made a comment here a little bit ago on one of your messages about be bold right and so yes th this is a big deal once again as you look at as everybody that's listening to this thing you talk about your personal success journey right it requires boldness meek doesn't make it meek that's don't right. make it meek don't make it and so we got a six five 275 pound black muslim chaplain in the u.s wow! <laughs> it don't happen folks it don't happen i spent 20 years in the military a lot of our other team have <laughs> spent 20 years in the military it does not happen but here's one right here's this example your example sits right there with you too your story will be told as well if you don't stop don't quit so chaplain if you can do this for me you, you talked about uh, well we talked about that part here but the mindset how would you help somebody here what would you suggest to them about how to push through the challenges that are ahead of them so they can reach their desired level of success. Well, there, I, I got a thousand sayings, but this this is the most important. Most people die at 25, but they're not buried until they're 75. Mm. I'm, I'm going to say that again. Yeah. Most people die at 25, but they're not buried until they're 75 because they, they have bought into this false narrative of reality. Yeah. There's no reality but God. Mm. So when you think about who you are and where you want to go, you got to be bold. You got to be bodacious and you got to stop. I hate this word humble. That's an intractable mm -hmm. word for me. Mm -hmm. Humility has nothing to do with excellence. Humility mm -hmm. sometimes keep you in the closet. Let me tell you something when you're talking about being bold. So I have been scared all of my life to do everything because my environment taught me to be scared. My parents taught me to be scared. Everybody's talking about these limitations. So after I got this message, I need to believe in myself. I got out the military because I needed to go to seminary. But before I went to seminary, I needed to do something bold. I want you to hear this. All right. I wanted to, I was tired of people telling me what to do. I wanted to learn Arabic. So you know what I did? I cleaned out my savings. I got on a freaking airplane to Jordan. I didn't say Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> to Jordan. Yeah, yeah. I got off the airplane, can't speak the language, didn't know how to get where I was going. I found the first mosque and slept on the freaking floor for two years. Whoa. I had a wife and kids, but Whoa. they said, oh, you can't go over there. Them people are going to kill you. I say, damn it, I'm already dead. Dang. Come on now, preach. I'm walking around here like a zombie. I don't know who I am, where I'm going. I'm already dead. I need to do something bold. And I did it, and it changed my life because I stopped being afraid. Yeah. The only person I need to be afraid of is God. So there if it's go. out there, I'm going to do it. Yes. Mm. yes. I'm going to do it. Yes. Wow. And that is, man, that's such a big message. Be bold, folks. Be bold. Yes. I want this whole thing to be humble. So <clears throat> I'm a five foot 10, 165-pound black man. I've experienced some, some of what this chaplain has experienced because of his size as a black man. So it's not about, it's not about the size. He's a hundred pounds more than me. It's not that. The same things that you are experiencing, if you are a person of color and you have people who are scared of you because of that, that's their problem, it's not yours. Be yeah. bold, do the right thing. Yeah. Do the right thing. And, and oh man, you cannot be stopped. You cannot be stopped if you do the right thing. Man, chap, I'm running out of room to write. <laughs> I'm going to go get some more paper, and I'm just going to keep taking notes. And I, I hope that all of you, and I pray that all of you are taking notes also for this. 
And I'm going to stop. Joanne, what you got? I was just going to say, as I listened to him, um, um, Chaplain, as I listened to you speak about, um, you know, at 25, uh, many people die and 75 is when they're buried. I remember um, um, Earl Nightingale spoke about if you find 100 people, okay, and you ask them about what their dreams are in their 20s, 100 people in their 20s, chances are they have big dreams, right? And then usually by the age of 40 years later, only one of that hundred have yeah. acquired success yeah. while you have about 65 will be forced to rely on government programs and yeah. 30 will have already died. You gave them an additional 10 years, but Earl Nightingale's given them 65 years of, yeah. of actually walking on the earth. And, yeah. you know, this is why it's so important, a positive self-talk and it's so important yeah. to uh, um to to reach out to from mentors coaches and to reach for what it is whatever it is that you desire as chaplain so gracefully said don't stop don't quit be bold whatever it is that you want you have to go after it and again get people in your circle who will mm. support you and help you to get to the next level because success is achievable for each and every one of us it's just a matter that it's disguised as work you have yeah. to do the yeah. work you yes. have got to do the work. Yes, yeah, so that's absolutely. You, you know, I, I put on my videos a ridiculous work ethic because you have to do the work. And second of all, a caveat on some of what you said, sister, you know, those people who are in your circle, mm -hmm. sometimes they're speaking to you out of their own limitations. That's yeah. right. So I don't, I don't listen to them, right? Mm -hmm. They're speaking to you out of their own limitations and what they think that they can't do so you won't be able to achieve that. When I hear that, I automatically strategically start thinking about ways in which I need to do it. Ways if I have to, if four o'clock in the morning hadn't been working for me, I'm going to get up at 3.30 because I need to create more, more time. Most of us, in all reality, waste seven to eight hours. So I'm always, people always say, well, how do you, what, how do you have time to get two doctors and four masters? I said, listen, you have to strategically do this thing. I said, I love sports, but uh, discipline wise, I won't watch but the fourth quarter. I'm going to use the other three quarters to work on myself. Mm. Why? Because those guys are millionaires. Their children's mm. children will yeah. be millionaires. So what do I look like? Given my time and my energy while they're making millions. Mm. So strategically, I cut myself off to the fourth quarter. Uh, and then for my friends, this is why my second eye was, was intercept ignorance. When my friends say, hey, you know, that's never been done, been done. I say, brother or sister, with all due respect, that has nothing to do with me. Mm. Intercept <clears throat> ignorance, right? right? If you're around sometimes in our dysfunctional environments, people say, you know, hey, listen, I just want to, you know, if we go to these military schools, hey, I just want to graduate. Intercept ignorance. Mm. No, no. I want to be the top of the class. If I don't get there, it's okay. But I'm going to work hard to make sure I'm the top of the class. Why? Because in my DNA, this hurts, man. In my DNA, people were killed mm. because they tried to read and be yeah. excellent. Yes. What right do I have to yeah. be mediocre? Mm. You understand? Wow. So you have to intercept that type of ignorance in your own life. And I know that's hard for us because we have friends and we don't want to hurt their feelings. Mm -hmm. And they're not being malice. They're just speaking to you out of their own limitations. That's and you got to intercept that ignorance. Okay. Dr. Shabazz06 at gmail.com. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Peace. Peace.